Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. We have the confirmation about the Ukrainian attack on Crimean Peninsula, Yevpatoria, Saki, Jankoy and Sevastopol were under the fire for the two consecutive days. As it was reported, the main Russian headquarters were located in Saki airfield. The name of the airfield is Nova Fedorovka, it's one of the main bases for the Russian Federation in Crimea. And let me show you some of the satellite images. So here we go, those are the Russian barracks in the place and the first one is the main building of the airport. As you can see, there are some holes in the roofs of those three buildings and also a couple of shells came nearby. Picture before and picture after, you may say that that is, this is the green grass over there, but it's the winter time. My friends, Crimea is on the south, so the grass may stay green there for a very long time, including all of the winter. Especially if soldiers take care about the grass. Also, this image probably was a little bit exposed, so there are lots of the greenish color in it. For sure this happened for real, because Russian side also confirmed this particular attack. As rumors say, Gerasimov stayed in one of those buildings, so he wasn't in Sevastopol, but in Saki. Again, there are no any robust confirmation of him being in the place and being wounded by the shells. But today we haven't seen the main Russian army commander Gerasimov in the press or in any kind of the media source. Still, I think that the information coming about his death or wounds is fake. But I am also unable to state it by 100%, so we're gonna see it in the future. So all of those kabooms were registered and confirmed by the Russian side. Definitely Ukraine is concentrated on Crimea and our military command says that it's the part of the big operation in Crimea. Wow, interesting. Alright, it seems like Russia started one more attack on Krynki, Kherson Oblast, this time using some of the tanks. And here you see what usually happens to the Russian advancing forces. My friends, before we gonna review more details about this Russian failed attack, let me tell you about the sponsor and the partner of my channel. Yes, as usual, it is the Atlas VPN. We negotiated to continue a super discount especially made for my followers, where you may get the Atlas VPN for just $149 per month plus 12 months extra. It is absolutely outstanding offer from all of the premium VPN services. And with this super deal, the Atlas VPN I think is the best out there. It has military encryption standards strongly securing your data and your devices from being reached by government, unwanted ads and also hackers. I use the VPN all of the time and for me personally Atlas VPN is the best VPN out there. It has a security breach device monitoring feature so it alerts me that someone tries to reach my device then I use the public Wi-Fi. Then I see that message I disconnect from that public Wi-Fi. Atlas VPN is very fast. It guarantees you the best streaming connection then you watch movies on Netflix. And also by changing your virtual location you may get access to watch all of the movies, all of the series on Netflix platform. So now my friends, please check out my personal link in the video description just below or scan the QR code available on the screen where you may get the Atlas VPN with a super discount just for $149 plus 12 months extra. After negotiations we extended this huge discount especially made for my followers. And by choosing the Atlas VPN you also support my channel. So my friends, please join the club. And now let's go back to the review. Here you can see a huge classical kaboom of the Russian tank. It happened near to Krinky. Again, the new advancement of the Russian forces. Plus, as you can see, Russia continued to lose their modern BTRs. This is BTR-82, I believe. It is equipped with modern gun and there is also extra armor around. From the open hatches, I might think that Russian crew evacuated this BTR, but maybe not all of them. And the Russian Ural track was destroyed. It is used to deliver infantry forces or some of the supplies. Our guys say that it's just a small part of what was done over there. Plus, we have some extra videos from the place 
but those are not a good quality because they are filmed on the phone from the desk screen you can see that the screen is over there and someone is filming so hopefully the original videos will be released with much better quality basically the russian forces are caputed at the same spot so they advance via the same road and each time ukraine uses fpv drones and not just the fpv drones to identify and target them so here is Krinky and russia has just the single road to advance with their forces then they go to this forest line but even before going there they were totally caputed in this place and just some of the infantry or the remaining of the infantry forces usually go to those forests to fight against the ukrainian forces with all of the russian attempts they just continue to fail and struggle in krinky so it is definitely a good scenario for ukraine to keep this bridgehead some of the western media sources say that it was a wrong move from ukraine to advance to krinky because russia used lots of the artillery and aviation bombs to target our positions causing ukrainian army severe losses so what those journalists do they just speak with soldiers who were wounded or who suffered in a place and been evacuated to ukrainian territory obviously they say that it's just the Helenos in krinky and they are right but the war is like that in general for example in avdivka the situation for ukrainian army is mostly the same in krinky it is now even better because russia now do not use aviation out there because they lost three of the airplanes or even yeah four of the airplanes of suhoi 34 and they hesitate to use them again but they continue to use those on the eastern front lines especially in marinka and avdivka so speaking with our soldiers about the harsh reality of war western media sources some of them make conclusion that ukraine is suffering but at the same time they do not look at the other side what is the goal of this bridgehead and what it causes for the russian army i have already shared the statement from magyar who has the drone unit deployed near to krinky they are doing the great part of the job destroying the russian convoys so what he says that this bridgehead is very very important for ukraine and it's not the useless operation obviously because it causes a great disruption for the russian army russian army is forced to send the reinforcements to secure the area and also they are losing lots of the units and in the future this bridgehead might be used for the further advancement basically performing the counter-attack into the russian control positions so if you read some of the mainstream articles divide this information by a lot because the information presented in those articles are usually biased and depends on the background of particular journalist who is writing the article for example in new york times we know that there are some of the russian authors or or people who used to live in russia and sometimes their information is not real well maybe that is why you are here watching my channel and not only mine on youtube at least here you may find the independent opinion the Ukrainian military intelligence reports that its forces targeted two of the Russian Panzer S-1 air defense systems on the Russian territory. Russia deployed those in the Belgorod Oblast. And it seems like Ukraine is using something like Lancet drones. I see those pictures for the first time. The targets are tracked in the yellow square, so you can see it on the screen. Also have the notice that no GPS fix it means that no gps signal is available it means the drone is probably using the inertial reference system to navigate well it is a great achievement for ukrainian army targeting the russian air defense in belgorod it means that more drones would go to belgorod to target military infrastructure of the russian federation by the way russia has modernized the panzer s air defense system they put it on the tank chassis and now it looks like that it's the new modification that is now already being produced the difference is the better off-road capability obviously over here it's much better plus better protection for the crew but all of those radios and missiles are still very vulnerable even against the fpv drone attacks nevertheless you can see that russia is still capable to produce those kind of the systems the british intelligence has confirmed that after russian law 
lost many of their Suhoi 34 fighter dash bombers, they almost completely ceased crude operations in the south. Hmm. But unfortunately, in the recent days, Russia has again increased the tactical airstrikes around the bridgehead, but at the lower level than before. So I didn't know about it that they renewed the airstrikes. But still, they are not able to establish the air superiority over the area, and it's good. Some Russian is filming of what is left from the Star S self-propelled artillery system somewhere on the southern front lines. As you can see, there is the big hole in the ground and the debris of the self-propelled artillery system just spread around randomly in the field and it's crazy what is left from the system the power of the kaboom was definitely really big i believe that it was the detonation of the artillery shells inside this artillery system the abrams tank was spotted somewhere in ukraine i wonder if it is the training field or whether it is the front line already so we have those tanks and it's good yet there is no any evidence of those tanks being used by ukraine in the active combat all right so this is the failed russian attack attempt in sinkivka my friends, we have the full video of it, I'll publish it on my Telegram channel, because I'm not able to show you everything over here. I can just show you some of the screenshots and not all of them, so please follow me on Telegram to obtain more information about what is happening in Ukraine, especially on the battlefields. The video was shared in internet saying that first Ukrainian female pilot went on a pilot training on F-16. Wow! Such a beautiful lady indeed looks like Ukrainian, but she is not. So we have those posts, a female Ukrainian pilot flew an F-16 in Nevada, USA, a strangely photoshopped Ukrainian flag, the huge one just in the front. The truth is that she is American, her name is Madison Marsh and she prepares for her familiarization flight at Nellis Air Force Base. There is even the date of the flight, it happened not a long time ago. Marsh is one of the 51 contestants who will compete for Miss America crown in January. That's why she is so beautiful. <laughs> and we see that Marsh is the Air Force cadet. She is even working towards a master's degree in public policy at Harvard. And for sure, with her reaction and with the help from her assistant, she is not pretty much aware with the systems of the F-16. Yes, in Ukraine we also have the female fighter pilots too. Not many of them and I wonder if they were deployed for the training in the United States or in Europe. I'm sure that Madison Marsh is well-known public person. I believe that she has some of the social media accounts. So what was the reason to mislead with the information about her identity? To fake the information to present her as the Ukrainian pilot? I think it harms Ukraine in general. And obviously it's important to tell the truth. About the pilot in the video Madison Marsh, I wish her a great success in her Air Force career. I hope she will put it as her main priority. Well, actually, it was my dream to fly in the United States Air Force, but it didn't happen. The Wall Street Journal shares the information about the artillery usage of Ukraine and Russia. So during the summer campaign, Ukraine used more artillery shells compared to the Russian Federation, but now figures are different. Ukraine is using around 2,000 artillery shells per day, and Russia is using 10,000. You may say that this number is huge, 10,000 shells per day is an astonishing figure, but just to remind you, at the beginning of the war, at the first half a year, Russia used sometimes 50 and even 60,000 shells per day. So 5 up to 6 times more compared to what they use right now. It means that they still in lack of the munition, even though North Korea presented some of the shells for them probably for the food exchange for always hungry Kim Jong-un. Obviously, if Ukraine gets the new military support from the United States and other allies, 
we're going to increase this number to maybe 4000 per day and gradually russia would have to reduce using of their shells because they are unable to produce 10,000 of them per day in the long-term perspective so during the summer campaign i believe that russia would get close to 4000 shells as it was the last year probably you heard the news a couple of days ago that polish protesters start to block the roads for ukrainian trucks again well today they released the blockade of one of the main checkpoints because there was the agreement between them and the polish government the new government the good news for ukrainian supplies also romania is building the new connection road to ukraine it will be a highway the great news for ukraine because in this case will have the alternate supply for the european union potentially avoiding hungary and slovakia and also poland this evening russia attacked several of the settlements of the pokrovsk district it is located on the eastern side of ukraine unfortunately there are some of the civilian casualties 11 were reported including five of the kids the russian official are always shouting about the Russian peace and how they are willing to protect the Russian speakers but mainly they attack the regions where people mostly speak Russian it is complete nonsense but their people so Russians do believe that they want to liberate us the New York Times came out with the article that Washington will not continue the support of Ukraine with Patriot missiles indeed because the military support for the previous year has already been exhausted and used so we need a new deal from congress to continue the supplement of ukrainian army that's it it doesn't only rely to the patriot missiles but also to other stuff that we have from the united states but no worries i think it will go through the house of the representatives and finally ukraine will obtain the help putin met with some of the relatives of the russian soldiers who lost their lives in ukrainian war which he started i listened to his speech for some time and he appears to be quite happy that he met with some of the people and yeah quite fun yeah you lost your relatives your soldiers who died for nothing no father no father no husband but the grandpa well he is happy thank you for your sacrifice at the same time the real wives of the russian soldiers who were mobilized are asking the government to immediately free them from the army it's like the prison for them they even created some sort of the community the way to justice is the way home but the thing is that they do not say no to mobilization they say no to unlimited mobilization so there should be the fixed term for the russian army men to serve it means that finally they do not hesitate to send their husbands to fight in ukraine for some reason maybe for profit but the russian tsar putin seems to be scared even about this stuff that's why he organized the meeting with some of the families in his residence you see huge russian protests well actually now the russian society doesn't really care but they will because they are in lack of food for example chicken is absent in many of the russian shops they have issue with it because it's no longer profitable to organize the chicken factories in russia because of the high operating costs of those farms plus the fuel price is rising dramatically in russia also there are some of the heating problems in many of the settlements of the russian federation including the moscow region so this is what is happening in the russian apartments in their flats that are left mostly from the soviet union no one is fixing anything the radiators just collapse without the proper heated water At the same time one of the russian oligarchs oleg deribaska who is under the sanctions by the way somehow bought the 36 million dollar jet this is falcon 7x quite capable machine and how he bought it i'm out of clue well there are still some of the way outs if you're a rich russian oligarch and something tells me that deribaska has chicken and eggs to eat well because of the difference between the poor russian people and the rich oligarchs we should expect one more revolution in russia in the future the russian revolutions are always unexpected 
so it is very hard to predict when the new one starts. For the last 150 years there were at least five of the major Russian revolutions, so for sure the new riots are imminent in Russia, especially with the current regime. Ok, more news about the F-16s, Denmark says that it will supply the airplanes in around half a year, that's a lot to wait. But nevertheless we need the proper infrastructure to maintain those airplanes, so it's not only about the pilot training. So maybe they might do it earlier than Denmark. Honestly, I thought that we're gonna get those airplanes this winter, January or February. Anyways, we have what we have. Indeed, it requires lots of the time and efforts to put the infrastructure for the new jets in Ukraine. But obviously, we need them for the future attack operations if they will happen this year. Let's go back to the deep state military map for the moment because they've just released a new update. So it was yesterday and it is today this is marinka the town or the village that was taken by the russian forces not a long time ago and as you can see they continue the advancement westbound taking this part of the forest so yesterday and today unfortunately they propel forward but the main threat for ukraine is this road which connects marinka and kurahove Ukraine absolutely must secure this road from the possible Russian advancement. As for the rest parts of the front lines, everything without major changes. My friends, don't forget to press the like to this video, by doing so you help me a lot. And also please check out my personal link in the video description just below, where you may find the Atlas VPN Premium with a huge discount, which was made especially for my followers. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.